Hyperbarics has been used in, in years past to treat people who have gotten into trouble uh, when they've been scuba diving. More recently, we've started to use it to treat people who have problems with healing wounds. Sometimes those wounds are flaps that start to die. Sometimes they're just ulcers on the bottom of a foot that won't heal. And so at that time, we put them in a hyperbaric chamber. These chambers behind me, you can see, have a plexiglass outside so that people can see out all the time they're in a chamber and can sit and watch TV. Now, the purpose of the chamber is to be able to concentrate oxygen. So we put in 100% oxygen and then gradually increase the pressure in the chamber so that that oxygen is forced into the plasma around the red blood cells. Now when the, the oxygen increases around the red blood cells or in the plasma, then when the blood circulates out to the fingers or toes and diffuses out into the tissue, then more of the tissue, more of the finger, more of the toe has oxygen available to it to be able to use that to heal. Because in a lot of people who have healing problems, one of the problems is they don't get enough oxygen out into the tissues. And by increasing the oxygen and the pressure, we can guarantee that there's enough oxygen out in the tissues that they can heal. Now, I mentioned that we do it under pressure. And most people really cannot sense the pressure as it's increasing. If they do sense the pressure, it's a fact that their ears feel plugged. Just like when you go up on a mountain and you come down, your ears will feel a little bit of pressure in it by swallowing or yawning, then that feeling goes away and there is no sense of increasing pressure. I get a lot of patients who are sent here by their primary care physician for hyperbaric treatment. But my job is to screen those people and evaluate them to see if hyperbarics would be appropriate. In, in general, the conditions that require hyperbaric treatment are people that have carbon monoxide poisoning, people that have severe crush injuries, and people who have wounds that just fail to heal. The majority of people that we use hyperbarics on are people who have surgical wounds that reopen and that are having a hard time healing, or diabetics that have ulcers, particularly on their lower legs, that have a hard time healing. And those are by far the most common reasons we use it. We also use it to treat people who have had radiation injuries, either to their internal organs or to their skin. And that helps that injured tissue to both heal and to return more towards normal. Hyperbarics, because it's a new field, is being researched to be able to treat various things such as strokes or traumatic brain syndrome. Uh, but those things are not paid for by insurance. And so we're limited often uh, to those people that have insurance that will cover hyperbarics for particular and certain conditions. So even though it could be used in a variety of conditions, we're limited uh, to those things that I've mentioned. Having a series of hyperbaric treatments is very time consuming on the part of the patient. And I'd like to make sure that they understand that for a lot of wounds, a typical treatment is two hours a day, five days a week for 20, 40, or 60 treatments. And so they may be here two hours a day, Monday through Friday, for a full month or for two months. So it's a real time commitment on the part of a patient. And they have to understand that having an ulcer on the bottom of a foot can lead to amputation. And that we're doing these treatments both to heal that ulcer but to prevent amputation. And when you put that in context, then the time invested doesn't seem to be quite so much. Now, there are many things that we cannot put inside the chamber. 
but we do put in things that can make it more comfortable for a patient. For instance, a little bit of water that then makes it easy for them to swallow so that they can clear their ears. Uh, sometimes some hard candy, especially if it's a person is diabetic, so they can keep their blood sugar in an appropriate range. As you can see, the chambers are wide. They're 52 inches wide. They're plexiglass all the way around so people can see out and see around them 360 degrees. Uh, even to the point that we have TVs and people can watch their favorite movie, favorite video while they're in the chamber. We also have a tech that sits right here 100% of the time and are in constant communication with the patient. The patient either just has to look over or tap on the, the side and we then can talk with them and make sure that they're comfortable if they have any needs. Now once a treatment starts, we can't stop it in the middle unless we just abort the treatment and just stop it for the day. Uh, so we just try to make sure everybody's comfortable when they go in, that they're ready to go. Now you can see that everything is open, so we rarely have trouble with people who even have some claustrophobia. They usually can go in and they're fine. If they have severe claustrophobia and really afraid of that, then there are medications that I can prescribe that help them to relax and they usually then can complete a treatment.